the geoscience discipline, it is a must to work with data you can trust. One of the ways to realize this need is to apply and follow a proven working method. Today, I'm here to demonstrate to you, ladies and gentlemen, how disabled methodology, when applied, can provide data that works. My name is Mishek Biela. Good afternoon. I am a solution lead and product owner for for disabled product with 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 data mine. One of the reasons why you would implement disabled methodology is to achieve data integrity. Those of you that uh, perhaps it might be the first time that, that you hear about Sable or, or, or learn about Sable. Uh, Sable was, was established back in 1983 and it's an incrim name that stands for Standardized Approach to Borehole Logging for Exploration and Evaluation. Sable is more than just a database. It is a methodology. A methodology is a set of rules that governs, ensures, and protects data integrity. How do you achieve this data integrity? Your data has to be valid, it needs to be accurate, it needs to be consistent, it needs to be complete, it has to be usable and reliable. Once all those boxes are checked, you can actually trust your data. When Sable arrives to a site, we tend to identify problems and we offer solution. Uh, and one of these solutions or the main solution is the Sable methodology, which is the software engineering techniques that we apply to the geological problem domain. There are various problems that, that do exist um, at different sites, different mines, but for today I want to focus on the lack of geological accountability, which is a, re a result of a lack of data standard. What is the role of Sable? in all of this. Our role is to define a, geos a geoscientific data standard, to implement a, classif a classification system supported by a database, as well as data management processes, which govern the data to ensure its integrity and that it's reliable and it's easy to use. And to achieve this geoscientific data standard, we need to apply and adhere to a best work practice as required by the international and national mineral reporting codes, such as JOC and SAMREC, and also uh, the Committee for Mineral Reserves International Reporting Standard. What exactly is it that we need to master? We need to master the process of collecting and preserving the scientific data. This scientific, this geoscientific data may include and is not limited to survey, geological data, geophysical data, ge geochemical data, sampling, drilling, and trenching, analytical testing, assay data, mineralogical data, and metallurgical data, and other, inv and other available information. What is also key is to have competent person or competent individuals in place and their role 
is to ensure that the, the physical evidence of uh, of this as uh, 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 the and their role is to ensure that at least some physical evidence of assume uh, continuity of demonization on the property of interest is presented. Data collection and preservation. So Sable offers you the what the 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 the, the disabled methodology ensures that the complexity is reduced through the uh, capturing of the primary data sets within the standard. So how do we achieve uh, the, the standardized of the of 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 geoscientific of geoscientific descriptions it is achieved through our civil project definition where the structure is able to accommodate different commodity and different prospecting methods all in one database And then once the, 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 this primary data is captured, it can also then be viewed uh, graphically and also th through our Sable view, which can be used as a, val a validation mechanism. This tells the, the geologists that uh, the primary data captured is in a particular state, whether it's, it's correct or incorrect. And, and this Sable view reports can then be used as a sign of mechanism for one to trust that the, the, the captured data is in a, a good state. Apologies, this uh, there's something that keeps disturbing me. Uh, that is menus. Okay, I've attended to it. And what kind of data do we need to collect? primary measurements and observations for relevant parameters according to the defined international and national professional standards and definitions for clarity. As we all know, geoscientific data is both qualitative, that means it's descriptive, and quantitative, that means that it can be measured. And for this data to be reliable, it needs to be reproducible, usable, relevant, and representative. But importantly, it has to be unbiased for data integrity to be realized. Some examples of qualitative data will include primary identifications and observations, anything relevant to, to resource and reserve estimation, metadata required to quantify to quantify confidence by quality assurance quality control and auditability in the business processes and data management some of the quantitative data examples will include primary measurements as reference in the, in, in the relevant mineral reporting codes the assay results from the different laboratories geotechnical data um, an example of such is the number of, um, of discontinuities and hydrogeological data. How does Sable help you now in, in ensuring that this data is captured and preserved within a governed standard? The Sable methodology reduces complexity in the primary data sets through the, standard, the standardization of geoscientific descriptions. It also clarifies the primary evidence into relational structures which promote cognition and data abstraction. The quality of the data is maximized and so is the integrity, transparency and usability. So as can be seen from this screenshot, 
the data is logged into Sable within a governed standard through these lookup dictionaries to ensure that no one captures data outside of the best work practices per site. And uh, what are the examples of data that, that we, we need to collect? This data includes the data from the external sources, and this data includes uh, a data from the laboratories, which is brought into Sable via the ETL processes. These ETL processes provides auditable, provides auditable interfacing on the importing of the external data, and these procedures will extract transform and confirm third party data before loading it into the Gavin database environment. So basically that means that this data is extracted from external sources. It could be through uh, XML files, it could be through um, a, a CSV uh, files, and then we extract that data. And then during transformation, we ensure that it, it confirms to a Sable LIMS standard, which is pay result. Pay result means that each result knows its unit of measure. It knows its detection status, meaning that they, they were sufficient material uh, to, to, there was sufficient material detected to continue with the analysis or, 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 or of that particular material and then each result also knows its method of analysis. In this example, it could be nickel sulfide. And then each method also knows its repeat. If it's just an original sample, then it, you'll have a, a repeat one. If there was any replicate done at, at the lab, then you will have replicate two. And then each result method and repeat knows its sample ID, example that L0002. In a batch, and, the, and that batch is submitted, and, and, the, it's a, the, and that batch can be submitted multiple times. So the first submission is what we see on the screen, but what if the batch fails? Could fail on accuracy, it could fail on, on contamination. If it fails on, on accuracy, the same page gets returned to the laboratory and the reanalysis is done on the same page, on the same samples, and then it, it is brought back into the Sable database and assumes a, sec, a, a second submission with the very same page ID. If it failed on contamination, new page altogether and new tickets are generated and then sent back to the laboratory. So this data then undergoes quality assurance and quality control to check if the control samples are within the limits as defined by, by the different as defined by the different standards, whether you you, you make use of uh, of international standards such, such as AMES or you have internal, uh, um, or if you have internal standards as well. So where all this data gets defined is in the reference branch, where for each and every standard, we know the, me the, the method of analysis, which laboratory the, 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 those particular samples are sent to, and then, the, the limitations are also defined. The limitations I'm referring to, that for each analyte, we know the mean, we know the one standard uh, uh, deviation, the two and three, depending on how a particular site likes to work. So you may find that uh, some people prefer to use a two standard deviation and work on that and others prefer to stretch it a bit and work on a tree. Why do we have to collect this data? We want to understand it. 
we want to promote interpretation and prediction of geological events and processes. And one of our tools within the Sable solution is a Sable view, where we produce this customizable configurable graphical reporting that symbolizes and quantifies and also displays related primary geoscientific data together to scale. An example of that, here are, are some of the examples of, of our strip logs that, that actually gives you a graphical interpretation of the data that exist within your Sable database. Now, I saw that uh, for this webinar, we also have mining engineers. So we have not forgotten about the the mining the mining engineers as well. So we are able to have this data logged into a Sable database by the stop observers for a particular rig and by different shifts. Now, once this data is collected and, and captured into Sable, we then generate different reports. That in, those include stop observer um, underground strata measurements, it includes the face lens reports and it includes the best cut summary report which provides performance indications on average of, of different rigs between shifts. Is everyone mining according to the plan or are we mining waste, are we mining ore, are we leaving any resources underground? This also informs then the mining engineer when it comes to the performance of each team in the different rigs. Production wise, are we meeting targets? How much resources is left uh, underground? And as mentioned, are we mining waste? And, uh, and this can also inf inform decision, the decisions when, when it comes to when it comes to bonuses and in, in, in terms of the performance uh, for each team. And obviously this data can also be extracted into a CSV file and can be used in dead party systems. It can also be saved as a PDF for reporting purposes. How must this data be collected? Through the predetermined data standard that quantifies qualitative scientific information at the same time, saving it to a relational data structure, which preserves geoscientific relationships. Now it's through this data standard which we achieve with our Sable project definition that defines rules and conventions in the data. The, the, these rules and conventions are held through the lookup, which, which defines the logging standard the this Sable project definition is very much customizable to fit specific geological terrains. So what that means is within the same database, you can have a structure for your, your drill holes, your RC, your diamond drill, your mapping, your trenches, all in one database. It can be, it can be adjusted as geological knowledge increases to maintain a fit for purpose data structure. Using the loop cup dictionaries, the standard terms are tied to a specific parameter to control the language used. So this means that uh, during capture, everyone captures within the defined and governed rules. So we make sure that uh, no person comes in and, 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 
and puts in the, the, their own term. For, for, for example, no one can come in and say and, and call an another site something else. So the different descriptions and different uh, the, the, the same descriptions and same codes are actually used. These lookup dictionaries are unambiguous. They are logical codes and defined and described in the national and the international published geological literature. How must this data be collected? Through disable through through disable project definition, which 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 holds the 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 standard as mentioned, and 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 the definitions, and then the lookups which holds the terms that that should be used. There's something that keeps disturbing me. Sure. Trying to get rid of it from the screen. It's everywhere. I also thought that I will touch on quality control and data completeness. And some of this includes the QAQC of the data to ensure that uh, for each and every analyte for a particular method, it falls within the set parameters. This is done obviously before the data is accepted and can be used for resource estimation and into the third party systems. So there are different graphs for duplicates. We have the scatter plots, which does the twin streaming compares the original to the duplicate. We, we also have um, the histograms. For standards, we have the Levy Jennings plots. That, that also checks and ensures that, that that particular standard, in this case, the IU209, in that page, actually falls within the set parameters. So the green line is your mean, the blue lines are your your mean and, and one standard deviation, and then the reds are the maximum and the minimum of the two standard deviation. So the geologist has this at their, expo at their disposal to make informed decisions for each and every batch, whether it passes or fails. Also, in, in terms of data completeness and checks, we have introduced dashboards that, that, that also can give you summary in terms of your data. You can check the completeness of the data. Performance-wise, how many balls have been completed? How many are still in progress? Have we abandoned any holes? How many meters have been drilled for each month? and um, also how many logs or how many balls have been logged by specific individuals. This is very customizable as well, meaning that uh, you, you, you can look at any information. So it's not a cutting stone to say that you, 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 only, con, uh, 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 you, you only uh, are limited to to look at this information on the screen at the moment so um, the this is was just preferred by by the client that we are using as a pilot site 
we can also generate reports and one of those is to look at the number of samples processed versus what was sent to the lab so processed means that you you can you can generate tickets for a particular uh, a block or drill hole but it does not mean that you're going to sample everything in there okay so the blue line or, or, or uh, on the graph resembles the number of samples that were generated for a particular drill hole versus the 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 other color which is the number of samples that were actually sampled and sent to the laboratory dispatched you can also look at the lab turnaround time for each and for for all the pages sent for a particular month how long did it take the lab on average to return or to report the information back to the site. So in, in this example, in March, there were 47 pages sent to the laboratory and it on average, it took the lab eight days to, to, to actually report that information back. So we look, we look at the date re uh, received, the date on which the, the, the laboratory received the page versus the date that it reported the results back to the site and then we get the average so they they are different reports which 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 can be uh, uh, which can be generated from this you can also look at the number of polls completed you can look at uh, which and how many pages passed versus the ones that failed and you you can even uh, drill down and look at how many batches failed on contamination versus batches that failed on accuracy. So you can actually keep tabs to, on, on, on the laboratories. Okay, the, the, this is the number of uh, uh, process batches versus the number of batches that actually passed. So in this example, in March, 70 pages were processed and only 28 passed. These reports can then be saved as a PDF and, 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 and uh, printed. Also then, uh, we, we are also able to give you a status for each and every block or each and every borehole or each and every drill hole okay so in this case for this east pit that particular block and then those drill holes these were the number of samples generated okay and then versus the number of samples that they that were actually planned meaning that they were tagged to be sampled and then so many samples or, or intervals were not sampled. Again, this is very configurable. Uh, depending what information you would like to have access to, this can be generated on the fly. Accountability. When it comes to sign-offs and user accountability. Okay. So we have worked on our WQM to improve that a lot. So in terms of Sable, when it comes to accountability, each and every individual will capture data in their own branches, in their own, in their own capture branches. They only have rights to append their own branches. They can view the rest. That's to make sure that uh, everyone is accountable for their own for, for their own uh, uh, working area. And then once the data is complete, then the, the, the data is then signed off and made available for third party systems. But there are rules 
which actually govern that particular sign-off. So users actually get alerts, say, okay, confirm um, the, the uh, for example, confirm caller sign-off. So that particular caller sign-off will then go and check for that particular drill hole. Has the survey coordinates been captured? The final X, Y, Z. Is, is the hole locked? Did we capture the end of hole? And that end of hole, does it actually match up to the maximum distance to of your lead log? If you want to sign off your samples, do you actually ha have sample entries in your sample log? If you want to sign off essays, everything that was dispatched to the laboratory, does it have all the results back? Only then can you sign off the, those essays. Otherwise, the system will not allow you to sign off. Lithology sign off. So, so an individual that is responsible for, for lithology sign off will get an alert via an email and remind them that you have uh, an, a borehole that, that needs its lithology to be signed off. So I spoke about the filters or rules or conditions of sign off. So for a lithology sign off, for example, is that log is 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 is, is the whole, has the hole been locked? Okay. What do we look at? You can look at the person's name. They locked by. Was that record captured? Okay. So under pass, it's a cross meaning that the locked by was not captured. The final date was not captured, and that is the end of hole. The maximum distance to in the lithology was it captured? And does it match to the end of hole at the borehole level? Another cross, which means that particular condition um, has not been achieved. And then in the lithology table, did we find any entries? No, therefore you cannot sign off the lithology. Okay, so I also thought that we need to to cater for the juniors, the quarries, and the small consulting companies. And and these are the guys they that might not be in a position to afford the full blown sable when it comes to cost and and also perhaps this this the size of 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 the team. So what is a Sable Express? So Sable Express allows you to manage different logging standards. Okay, so this means that you can have a lot of Sable baby databases running around per individual. Okay, and this is offline. It's, it's available offline as well. And then if you, you have the main the the main database if because this can also work for a, uh, for a producing mine as well where you 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 can have individuals capturing data a, a perfect example is when you outsource the 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 capture of your exploration data as we see with with, with different sites so those individuals can then have the sable databases in in their local machines, okay, but the structure and the, the 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 logging standard can be maintained by the main database, which could be sitting at a mine somewhere. So when those guys have captured the data, they can then export it and email it around for a responsible person to actually import the data into the main database or they can get to the when they get to the office uh, with um, uh, with connection possible they can just simply sync the data into the main in, in into the main data into the main database but 
for the juniors, it, it is, it, it, this is very practical because you can just run with, 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 with this uh, a small portion of a database, whether it's, you, you are doing diamond drilling or ORC, or trenches, or mappings, with whatever type of data you, you want to capture. So the licensing, it's per individual, it's quick to implement, about five days, if we don't have to uh, migrate any legacy data. And that means if you are not sitting with data on, on spreadsheets, that, that needs to be brought into this Sable Express database. It's very economical. With, with flexible license terms. There we mean that that uh, you, you can actually rent it out and, and uh, per month, you can rent it out for three months, uh, and uh, once the exploration work is done, you can, then, you can then switch it off and still keep your data. So it's very, practic very practical in that sense. And as mentioned, it can cater for any commodity and any prospecting method because it also abides by the Sable methodology, which is the Sable project definition, which, which I, I demonstrated later. So what comes with the Sable Express is the data capture. You are able to validate this data. You're then able to produce a Sable view report, the, the graphical plot of the data and then you are able to export the data out of the database into, into CSV files as well. Then what if you are just a junior exploration mine or a producing mine that wants to start small? We also have a jumpstart option. This jumpstart option gives you what we refer to as a store ID and that is the logging standard or the cupboards where you can actually capture your data. So it's all the tables, it's, it's all the validations, it's the security that, that comes with Sable in terms of who can access what in the database. You are able to also produce the Sable view reports and export the data uh, for use uh, on the third party systems. It also comes with LabQM, which is a combination of ETL and ZQC. ETL, the extra transforming load, so the importing of, 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 of external data from external sources, which may include essay results, it could include data from the joint venture, it could include your borehole coordinates, it could include your downhole survey data as well. It also comes with the QAQC functionality for the for the essay results. The picture you see here actually is someone uh, a logging in Sable um, on a tablet, and that's also very much uh, possible, especially for these offline Sable databases, because uh, obviously you could go in and see that the core area the the is no network so the the tablets are are actually very much practi uh, very much practical the uh, uh, another option in terms of devices uh, uh, that we recommend is the tough books as well so we have uh, quite a few sites that, that that actually logged on these rugged tough books which can withstand dust rain and light So in terms of the different packs or modules that we, we offer or different services, um, they include the log IT, which is an offline data logging and validation, LabQM, which I've, I've mentioned in terms of the, the, the import of, or, 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 of data from external sources, within the governed uh, uh, ETL rules and the QAQC of that data. The rock engineering as well, the rock engineering service, 
So this allows you to validate your geotechnical logging standards, evaluate the geotechnical factors, and produce configurable rock mass ratings as well. The sample tracking module, which allows you to generate sampling instructions, unique sample tickets, sample batches based on on customizable QC protocols, and this means that uh, um, we, the, this allows you before you dispatch uh, uh, to the laboratory to 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 insert your control samples. So it could be three samples in in a batch of 20. It could be it could be six samples in I mean six control samples in in a batch of 40. So depending on your QC protocol rules. So we are able to also uh, produce paperwork in terms of way bills and lab orders. So the sample is checked from the time it 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 leave the it leaves the fields into the courtyard, and then from there uh, the 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 samples are tagged. They then they, then then batches are created based on these sampling instructions, which which informs you uh, per batch how many samples you 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 need to put and and how many control samples you need to insert and what constitutes a batch. And then also uh, in in terms of uh, analysis request as well, uh, you 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 can uh, specify for the laboratory the 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 type to the type of tests you 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 need to be done you you need done for for those samples. Uh, are you are you looking at the laboratory to do a 4E are you, uh, a test or are you looking at them to do um, um, uh, Chrome, so it, it, it's all the, diff, the, 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 the different analysis requests for the different methods. Uh, CAP, which is call analysis and beneficiation. So uh, this is call management through wash density fractions analysis and and uh, product uh, and product beneficiation. We uh, we also have. Um, uh, a few uh, call projects they, uh, that we, we've done in the past, including um, the Exaro Khrode Khalek up in Lipalale. Uh, and uh, we're also currently busy with uh, MC mining uh, and, uh, and, uh, in, in terms of using them as a pilot site in revamping our call solution as well. The, the Sable Limbs is also part of our service. The, the, this is a, a one standard reporting format, which, was, which is built from the Australian ADX. So it's a pair result format where we say to the lab, for each result, we need the unit of measure. We need to know if there was sufficient material detected uh, and then we need to know the 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 method of analysis that 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 was used. Was there any repeat uh, done on the test? Uh, and then uh, w when was the page received uh, uh, to the lab? And then uh, were there any sample missing? And 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 things like that. So we we encourage the laboratories to to report all that relevant information. And um, it's reported in an XML to make sure that uh, they, they, there's no there's no fudging of the data, because in spreadsheets and 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 and, and, and CSVs, we've they've actually been a nightmare where data can can just change uh, something uh, like, like um, a value could be recognized as a number or someone could go in and, and make changes to the spreadsheet. So that's why we encourage the laboratories to actually report in a standardized format and in an XML. So the the other option in terms of our Sable limbs, 
we we can also have a staging database between sable and and the limbs the 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 the, the laboratory uh, information reporting uh, 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 management system where where the 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 samples when the batch is ready to be dispatched to the lab at a click of a button those samples are, dis are dispatched to the staging database and then the laboratory listens out for the signals or flags and recognize that uh, uh, batch one has been has been dispatched from the sable database it, it is now ready for analysis so they they, they then start the testing uh, and inform us that uh, they've received the page and then the the testing continues once the page is complete they then update certain flags to 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 inform us of the completion of the page uh, and then there's also geophysics uh, to extract raw natural gamma intensity data output from geophysical probes uh, including the spiking calibrating and evaluation uh, of the coal qualities Just want to run through this now because time-wise. So in, in terms of the value uh, proposition that you get out of this uh, Sable methodology and, and Sable uh, as well as, as a service provider, it is backed by experienced team, competent geoscientists and software professionals. Um, it provides the governance and, and legal compliance re uh, required by professional uh, mineral reporting codes and stock exchange. The product development is on is is ongoing. We are actually on our seventh generation now of the product. We are busy uh, with the development of 7.2 at the moment. Some some of the users of Sable. They that are currently using Sable are included in this in this list. As you can see, it's quite it's quite diverse uh, between different commodities um, as well and and sites and 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 countries. Uh, when it comes to projects that, that we've been involved in in the past, they include Dipswana, GeoQuest in Zambia, Reco, uh, Signet Mining. Um, Harmony Hen, uh, Hana Mining in Botswana, uh, which was uh, which later changed its name to changed its name to to Kumaka, and then Til, Eramet, uh, and then Exaro Coal as well. The, these are just some of the projects uh, that that we've done. So um, also in terms of integration with different systems. Uh, Sable is very much uh, capable to act as a central location where where data can be coming from um, the, the 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 different systems and then registered into Sable and then uh, and then validation uh, uh, takes place the QA and then it can then be dispatched to the laboratories and then from the laboratories it can come back into Sable. QAQC is done and then it gets sent back uh, to these other base systems. So we are also very much capable uh, to have Sable as a, a central location or central da uh, database. Uh, benefits of data integrity uh, includes consistency. To make sure that the professional stand, uh, uh, the professional uh, standards are are are, are actually achieved achieved to transfer the the geoscientific knowledge, quality assurance. The software promote the software application promotes and and support uh, the international geological standards, and we also ensure accountability through the configurable user security on a parting shot just to remind you the role of sable as mentioned our role is to define the geoscientific data standard and uh, to implement a classification uh, apologies this thing is everywhere 
Uh, okay, there we go. I need to move it. To define a geoscientific data standard to implement a classification system supported by the database as well as data management processes which govern the data and ensures integrity, reliability, and ease of use. And we said that to achieve this, we need to apply and follow a best work practice, a method or approach that we follow regularly in order to master it.